Hello, folks. Welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, June the 7th. I'm Eric Wilkinson, and you very well may recognize me from mainstream media, where I talk about the economic data, the geopolitical environment, how those impact the markets with some of my market analysis. I'm going to do the same thing for you folks in these market commentaries, but I'm also going to talk about my trades that I implement into my portfolio based on the assumptions we come up with in my market analysis. I've also streamlined the process for you folks to find the best strategy for any given assumption. So please follow along as we will show you how to find that strategy uh, based on the pricing. We are good stewards of capital here at ProTrader Strategies, so we need to know if they're expensive or cheap before we start trading. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Also, please smash that like button for us. It does help us out. Comment at the bottom. If you have any questions, comments, or anything else, I want to make sure you're clear of concept. So please go back and forth. Also, love to know what chart setups you guys look for in any type of swing type trade. Please let me know what you guys like to look at because we'll discuss that in these daily market commentaries. And finally, subscribe to our channel because we're going to start doing these live and you will be able to partake in that. We'll go back and forth, questions and comments live in those video so please uh, subscribe to us and we will make sure that you guys are in on those videos as well all right so let's get on with the markets we've got actually let's talk about the economic data only in the form of all of these fed governors are talking right now and they have a pretty solid message they are going to start talking about talking about tapering now, what does that mean, folks? Well, really what they're trying to do is make this real signal so we don't have a taper tantrum like I've been talking about for a while where the markets like to throw a bit of a tantrum when we start seeing the Fed change policy. And that's why they're trying to make these signals a little bit earlier. They're saying, hey, we're going to start talking about talking about tapering. That doesn't mean they're going to raise interest rates, folks. That doesn't mean that they're really even going to start tapering. What the taper means is they're going to slow the buying of assets. All right. So that isn't raising interest rates. It will allow interest rates to, you know, kind of slowly migrate higher with the lack of their purchasing. And that is really what the, they're trying to tell people is we're not ready to raise interest rates right now. Yet, we are just going to start looking at timing for the slowing of asset purchases. That's it, folks. And I think that the markets are starting to see that these this is right on the uh, horizon where interest rates are going to start going higher. Having said that, I've said time and time again this entire year, it's not going to happen this year. And it's not, folks. It's not even probably going to see the taper happen before the end of the year. All right. So for the rest of the year, I think that we're going to continue to see the markets pretty much trade sideways. We might be higher on the year, lower on the year, but it's not going to be by massive amounts like we saw in 2020 with that massive parabolic move to the upside. All right. So we do have a little bit of weakness in the equities today, as you can see with the uh, E-mini S&Ps are slightly negative on the day. Crude oil uh, is negative territory. Nobody's happy today besides the folks that are in on gold futures. They're getting a little bit of a move today because of the weakness in dollar worries of inflation, uh, which is going to constantly drive the precious metals there. All right. Bitcoin continuing to have some struggles last week, really working in and around this area of 35,000. That is becoming 35, 36,000 is becoming a real comfort zone for Bitcoin. Um, with that said, Elon Musk has caused some angst in this market and they need to get somebody behind them like an Elon Musk to get a little bit of rejuvenation to the upside here because I think it's caused a little bit of cracks uh, showing up in these uh, diamond hands, if you will. All right, bonds are in negative territory. This is why I was talking nobody's happy unless you're owning gold because most of the broader markets are in negative territory. Uh, VIX, slightly negative. Um, that would infer that we might be seeing some movements to the upside, but that's not necessarily the case. 
It's really that we are right here around the point of control. Yes, we are in negative territory, but the markets are comfortable in and around those high volume nodes there and or time nodes that we look at on those points of control. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average down 100 points on the day. You can see E-mini S&Ps overnight inventory was flat. They were short, flushed themselves out coming into the daytime. But today you can see the weakness coming into the markets as we're hearing a solid message from the FOMC. I think that that's what this weakness is a little bit of about is that they are going to start uh, talking about these uh, tapering of purchasing assets. All right. So uh, we've got the Dow Jones slightly in negative territory, NASDAQ in negative ter territory, and E-mini S&Ps uh, slightly in negative territory. All of that could change at the, uh, by the end of the day. It's really light volumes today, so anything can happen. If I were to give a risk assessment, I would say the risk assessment, folks, is to the downside in equities today. Uh, just the way that it just feels overall heavy. We've got some of these taper tantrum um, kind of festering ideas coming up. So a little bit of weakness in the equities. One of the sections of the equities that is doing very well is part of this reopening trade and specifically uh, Vegas. Just had a friend come back from Vegas this weekend and said it was off the hook. So uh, Vegas going forward, 80 plus percent occupancy does not seem like they are uh, losing steam. This reopening trade, the, the roaring 20s, looks like it could be uh, working out quite nicely here for the casino stocks. So with that said, I'm already long pin uh, in my IRA. Uh, I wanted to add some of these casino stocks to my uh, trading portfolio. With that said, we've got low implied volatility. Settled above the 50-day simple moving average here and are creating a nice, bottoming doji that looks to settle above the 50-day simple moving average. That's not going to be the determining factor for me today on this 50-day simple moving average is the chart setup. And with this setup across the board, the casinos, if I start flipping through Las Vegas Sands and some of the other ones, they look like they found a little bit of a bottom and are starting to uh, form a, uh, a, a swing type trade that we can take advantage of. And with that said, a bullish swing type trade with implied volatility really low, I decided to go in to the longer duration options to limit that theta decay, right? I want to be a good steward of my capital. Limiting theta decay is one of those things that we need to do when we're buying options. How do we do that? We get into the longer duration where that theta decay is much less. And uh, but around that 45 delta, option in the options that are expiring outside of 70 days this is the sweet spot I talk about in those webinars. So please check those out. And I went in and bought the September uh, 135 calls in there for $8.25. I did it relatively small. I don't want to get overweight in the casino section, but or in the casino sector, but I don't have a whole lot of exposure in my trading portfolio, which is why I'm adding that today. All right, that's it. That's all I've got for you guys. Uh, please take a moment to go over our disclaimer as we're an educational company. Please comment at the bottom. If you guys like uh, some chart setups, would love to hear what you guys look for. This is one of my favorite types of candlesticks to look for on a swing type trade or a reversal of momentum. What do you guys look at? Please comment down at the bottom and remember to subscribe. So when we start doing these live videos, you guys get a, a notification that, hey, we're going live and it is going to be uh, to the minute information. We'll be trying to release the, uh, give you guys a heads up on the data as the release, all of those fun things uh, we're going to be trying to play around with for you guys to make it a little bit more enjoyable and that you guys can actually uh, take a little bit more away. All right, that's all I got. Please smash that or take that. <laughs> Bye for now.